Hi, psychologist Dr. Ali Matu. I've worked with a lot of people who have obsessive compulsive disorder, and I've been trained in one of the most effective treatments for OCD, exposure and response prevention. And what I've noticed is a lot of people don't get that treatment. In fact, they might get a treatment that doesn't help them at all, or might even make things worse. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the top signs that your OCD treatment might actually be doing you harm. No measurement. How's my OCD? Oh, you know, bad. Like most anxiety problems, the symptoms of OCD can seem invisible to everyone else around you. That's why every good OCD treatment starts with some type of standardized measure of understanding all your obsessions, all your compulsions, and how all this stuff ranks compared to most people who have OCD. One of the most common measures is called the Y-Box, the Yale Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale. Hopefully I got that right. If your treatment is not incorporating measurement, it's really hard to know where you're starting from and it's really hard to know what to focus on in early treatment and then almost impossible to know if you're getting better or not. Now, you don't need to be taking a standardized measure every session. What I often did is I would use these standardized measures to identify where we're focusing on right now and then I would look at things like how much time are these compulsions taking up, the ones we're really focusing on, trying to bring that number down. And once we've made enough progress and revisit one of those standardized scores again, if there's no standardized measurement going on, it's a big red flag. No understanding of OCD. Why is this happening to me? Oh, we're gonna have to unpack a lot more to figure this out. What OCD is and why you're experiencing it should not be a mystery in your treatment. We know it's a biologically based problem. We know different areas of the brain are involved. We know anxiety is triggered in situations where it doesn't need to be triggered and then your mind tries to make sense of it. That's where the obsessions really come out of and that leads you to some type of desire to engage in a ritual. The big picture of how OCD works is not a mystery and if your therapist isn't explaining the science of OCD to you then I would be concerned because then they probably don't know the science of how to treat it. Analyzing obsessions. Let's try to understand what's really beneath this fear you have of not fully turning off a switch causing some type of electrical failure that cascades into a fire which burns down your home, your neighbors, and eventually the whole city. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think about this stuff all the time so I can just like keep doing that. Exploring your obsessions gets you nowhere with OCD and this is something that can make your symptoms so much worse if you try to dig deeper and deeper and this thought, what does that mean? and why might you be having this worry and what does this say about this relationship and that relationship? No, don't do any of that stuff. It's not important. All the obsessions, there's this pie product of this biologically based problem. They don't need all your focus. Stop playing that game of tug of war and instead focus on different behaviors and actions that you can take to reduce the intensity of these obsessive thoughts and the drive to engage in these rituals. The more you get lost in the obsessions, the worse your OCD can get. And if your therapist is encouraging you to do that, they absolutely don't know how to treat this problem. Exploring childhood. To really understand this cleaning ritual, let's go back to the beginning and talk about your toilet training. Okay, if you say so. This is sort of tied to the last one, but if your therapist is spending a lot of time looking at your childhood and your early years and how this might be related to your obsessive compulsive disorder symptoms, that's a big red flag. That's really not needed when you're treating OCD. Yes, your obsessions might have a real personal relevance to you. Maybe you're a religious person and your OCD is really attacking your faith and making you feel like you have to do things in order to be religious. Or maybe your relationships are really important in your life and your OCD is really attacking those. Or maybe you have a big interest in Lego and now your OCD is really attacking your love of those bricks. I get it. 
That kind of stuff happens with OCD. But remember, it is this biologically based problem. It latches on to things that feel very emotionally important to you. There's no greater childhood significance. You've probably been experiencing OCD for many years. It's probably gotten worse over time. Maybe it started in late childhood in your teenage years. But beyond that, you don't have to focus too much on your early developmental years. Caveat to this is a lot of people who experience OCD might also experience other problems. Maybe you've experienced trauma, maybe you've experienced depression, maybe you have social anxiety. All these other things might be important as they relate to your childhood, especially if we're talking about trauma. But if we're just focused on treating OCD, your childhood doesn't matter too much. It doesn't equip you to deal with doubt and uncertainty. So what should I do differently when I keep getting these compulsions? Well, we're out of time for today, but let's keep the conversation going at our next appointment. OCD is driven by doubt and uncertainty, and if your treatment isn't teaching you what to do when doubt is high, uncertainty is high, then it's probably a waste of your time and money. The best OCD treatments teach you that obsessions and compulsions are not the only way to reduce anxiety when you have OCD. They teach you how to postpone your obsessions so you can increase the amount of time where you're not engaging in those thoughts. Good OCD treatment will show you how to change the way you're dealing with your obsessions. Instead of thinking about them over and over, maybe you write them down or you sing them out loud. Or if they're images, you find ways to change these images. And similarly, good OCD treatment shows you how to change your rituals. Instead of doing them at a certain speed, maybe you slow them down or speed them up or you do them incorrectly. And finally, the most important part about good OCD treatment is it shows you how to seek out more uncertainty in your life, how to bring it back into your home, how to make it something that you welcome every day instead of something you try to actively avoid. If you wanna learn more about what good OCD treatment looks like, check out Stop Obsessing. This is an older book, but it's really good. There's a great section on self-help for OCD. And if you're a parent with a kid struggling with this stuff, check out Talking Back to OCD, also a classic. And one of my favorite organizations for OCD is IOCF, the International Obsessive Compulsive Foundation. For a much deeper dive into how OCD works, check out this video right over here.